Good afternoon, everybody. All right, that sounds a little better. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Erica Bell. I am the Director of Student Life, Athletics, and Recreation here at the Metro Campus. I am responsible for co-curricular activities, um, those fun things, those not so fun but yet still important things that go along with your academic classes. And today is one of those things that I think will be most beneficial to you um, as you continue your academic pursuits. Uh, this gentleman we have today um, has been where you are and um, is going to share with you some insights about creating your path to connecting to the campus, engaging at the campus with other students, and continuing that path to completion, as in graduation. And I'm sure everybody intends to get there, right? Yeah. All right, that's why we're here. So with no further ado, really quickly, let's have everyone please silence their cell phones. If you have them out and on, please make sure they are on silence. Uh, for those of you who were um, here a bit early and were lucky enough to receive a copy of Mr. Perry's book, we will um, have him out in the lobby with a few refreshments for those of you who have not had lunch um, to sign after the presentation if you're able to stay. Also, if you have any further questions or comments or ideas of things you'd like to see happen here at the campus. My office is in the campus center, same building as the cafeteria, but on the first floor in room 102B. So this afternoon, we are here for a real treat. Our speaker today is Tawan Perry. Tawan overcame incredible odds to become the person he is today. After completing high school, he had to learn the realities of life without an education. Choices are made for you. The turning point came when he grew sick and tired of doing nothing with his life. He enrolled in a local community college and began taking classes, just as many of you are today. Although he was enrolled, he failed both English and math placement tests. He spent the next two years struggling to get out of the developmental classes. With hard work and persistence, he eventually graduated and was awarded a full academic scholarship he would never look back. Tawan Perry is a nationally known speaker and the author of eight books, including Up Your Org, A Guide to Help Student Leaders Thrive. He has been a guest on countless TV and radio shows on Fox, NBC, and CBS. He was also named one of Prince George's Community College's Fabulous 50 alumni. Tawan's talks and workshops focus on student leadership, college completion, and diversity. Tuan has traveled all over the world, including France, Italy, Egypt, Ethiopia, England, Brazil, Switzerland, Greece, and the, Domin the Dominican Republic. He has been to over 38 states in the US, bringing truly a national and global perspective. He currently resides, as he mentioned, in Raleigh, North Carolina. Please join me in welcoming Tuan Perry. When I say try, you say see. Try, see. try. See. When I say power, you say up. Power, uh. power. Uh. All right. Do me a favor, everyone please stand for me. Yes, it's that type of program. <laughs> I need participation. All right, now do me a favor, just give me a clap. One, clap, clap. A little bit faster. Faster. All right. Now, you know, I know that you can clap, and that's great, but my question is, can you dance? New Cupid, new Cupid. Mm -hmm. Two mm -hmm. Time for a change. Do 
Yes, yes. Hey, that like to been an accident. Like to been an accident. So close, so close. All right. God, if you're not in shape, like the Cupid Shelf is a bad dance to do. <laughs> Woo! All right. Before I get started, I think it's imperative that I uh, I thank the people that put this together. So if we could just give them a round of applause for putting this together. And also give yourselves a round of applause just for being here because a lot of people didn't come today, so I'm glad to see you all are here. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about uh, college success and how to be successful because, as Erica said, you know, the goal of this is not just for you to spend some time taking classes, but it's, it's, it's for you to actually uh, finish school with a college degree or certification. And then, of course, move on with your lives. Uh, some of you will go on to four years. Some of you will go on to careers, but all of you, uh, in one way, shape, or form, will be successful. And I'm hoping to give you some strategies today that can help you to become successful. Um, and I think it boils down to really three different things. And those three things I'm going to talk about, so make sure you have your notes out. Um, because as I talk about these three things, I will be um, uh, referencing them again during our Q&A. Uh, but let me tell you a little bit about my story. Uh, she shared a little bit with you, but Prior to even going to community college, I actually was not a, a, a really good student in high school. I, in fact, in high school, I had a 1.4 grade point average. Yeah, yeah. My mother said some other things when she saw that report card. <laughs> but this is a family program, so I won't repeat it. Um, and I did a lot of things I'm not necessarily proud of when I was in school. Uh, but one thing I realized is that I just needed a second chance. Now, for me, Fortunately, that second chance came in the form of community college. That was my second chance. And there I met a woman by the name of Janice Watley. Janice was, more than anything else, she was like a GPS. Turn to your partner and say GPS. Oh, yeah. She made things easy for me. Kind of like the GPS I use today to find this campus. Because had I not had a GPS, I wouldn't have found it and probably would have got a ticket. Because I know you have those, you know, those, those uh, stop signs here that, that have the cameras. So good thing I had my GPS to, to, to make me aware of that. But with Janice, she made things much easier for me. Um, because when I didn't know the answer to something, I knew I could always go to her. And if she didn't know the answer, 
she pointed me in the right direction. And every campus has these Janices on the campus. You all have many of those people on this campus that are here to contribute to your success. And it doesn't matter what they do, whether they're a professor, whether they are the janitors, whether they are uh, the people on support staff, they are here to contribute to your success. Um, so I really think that my life would be very different if I didn't have Janice there helping to guide my directions uh, and what I wanted to do. One of the models that I really live by now, um, and this is the motto for my college completion program, um, it, and it is get connected, stay connected, graduate. Can we say that together? Get connected. All right, very good. Because listen, as a first generation college student, meaning that neither one of my parents went to college, in fact, they both dropped out of high school, I didn't really know where to go. I needed someone like Janice that could help me. And I know, much like yourselves, some of you may have those similar stories where you, you may be the first person in your family to go to college. And it's OK to be the first person. Because it's like that dance of Cupid Shuffle. Sometimes you might find yourself dancing by yourself. But what I want to convey to you is that when you come to college, you don't have to dance by yourself. This journey is not meant for you to do it all by yourself. So one of the things that you have to do when you're in college in order to be successful is to utilize your resources. So that's one of the first points, utilizing your campus resources. Because as students, you cannot do your best if you are unaware of information. And you will find this information. You will find out how to be successful by utilizing your resources. I want you to turn to your neighbor, and I want you to say, ask for help, not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. And there's nothing wrong with asking for help. As a matter of fact, when I first arrived to this campus uh, about 30 minutes ago, I didn't know where I was. So what's the first thing I did? I asked somebody. Turn to the person and say, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. That's right. I'm sure you all heard that one before. But it's very, very true. Because again, the college journey is not meant for you to do it all on your own. And the best way for me to demonstrate this is to call up some volunteers. Can I get some volunteers? OK, one. I need more than one, though. I need about, about uh, let me get about 13 volunteers. Just come on stage. Don't raise your hand. Just come on stage. And let's encourage them. Let's give them a round of applause for being so brave. Yeah. It takes a lot of courage to be the first to do something or to volunteer, or even sometimes be willing to, you know, look silly. What you won't be doing today, I assure you. Got a lot of women up here. No, no men, huh? No men, huh? Just, just women. One, 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 two. All right. I like men. I do. I, I am a man, so I, I do. How many football fans we got out there? All right. All right. What, what's your favorite team over here? What? Green Bay. I'm, I'm sorry I asked you. Did somebody say who? All right. Right now, this sounds like Price is Right. I don't even know what they're saying. So I bid seventy-five dollars. I don't know. Steelers, okay. All right, Steelers. Couple Browns fans. Detroit sucks. Who said that? It's always one person. I need. Uh, where's Erica? Where did she go? Is she still here? Did she roll out? Okay. Can I get? Let me get two uh, college staff members that work here. Let me get two two people. You got one, and I need another person. Yeah, let's give them a round of applause. All right, Detroit sucks. Who, who, who says that? I mean, I, I, all right, ladies, this is for you. I want you to slap those on real quick. All right, I need, I need, I still need some more volunteers. I need just a few more volunteers. Let me get about two more volunteers. All right, that's right. Don't be afraid. This is like 
kind of like church almost, when they ask you to call you to the altar. <laughs> and self, no one will be forgiven today. <laughs> That's not what I meant to. All right. All right, you're going to be, sir, you're going to be my quarterback. All right, now you got to get your team together now. That's right. All right, so get your team together. Organize your team. All right. Why he get to be the quarterback? I didn't know. You, can, you, still, you still are the quarterback. You are the star. But for right now, you can be defense. So uh, get your defense together. All right. You, all right, now I know some of you may be saying, but I don't understand football. I don't even like football, but I want you to get the concept that I'm about to use to compare it to college. You got to think it's a lot, they're very similar in many ways. We know, we know in football, there are two sides, two opposing sides. There's offense and defense. The purpose of offense is to do what? It's to score. The purpose of defense is to what? Stop them from scoring, right? All right, so it's the same thing in college. You know, you are the quarterback. You, the student, are the quarterback. You are the person that takes control of your huddle. You pull your team together. They look to you for leadership. But everyone knows that a quarterback can't win the game by themselves. They need protection. They need someone to throw it to. They need someone to hand it off to. That's why they have a team. And it's the same thing in college. As you go through this process of utilizing your campus resources, you have to understand what your resources are and how to use them. For example, they got this right with running back, man. You kind of, that's right. That's right. You're going to run some people and over. I'm, and I'm having uh, Jim Brown, that's right. So for natural aid, I, I see that sort of like it being a running back because if you don't hand that paperwork in right, it, it's going to be fumbled. It's going to get lost. You could lose it. Then you got the center. Let's step up right here. All right. <laughs> it's academic advising. No, because nothing starts, or your counselors, nothing starts without meeting with that person first. You can't register for classes without talking to that person. We've already talked about the quarterback. Offensive line, academic support. So how many of you know what the tutorial centers are on this campus? All right. All right, good. For those of you who don't, uh, I'm going to defer to my, my staff members. Where can they go if they need help with their math or science or writing? Where can they go? Student services and library, right. Everyone taking notes? Because I'm telling you, it's not a matter of if, it's when. And when you have that trouble, when you run into those problems, where do you go? So now you know. All right, career services. How many of you know where career services office is? All right. Now, for those of you who don't know, because I know you may be new to school, career services is a place that you go in order to help you find internships as well as you figuring out what you want to do. So it helps you with career exploration. That's right. So make sure you go there. Smile for the camera. <laughs> How you like me now? OK. Then you got professors. And we all need professors. The divas. Oh, yes. If any professors in here, I'm sorry that you offended. That's, that's actually true. Professors know they're divas. Anyway, professors, you need to be able to communicate with them, whether it be uh, you know, long distance or short distance. So you need them. You need to connect with them. And they have what is called office hours. Now, let me tell you what office hours are. Office hours is a si time that they set aside just for you, just for you to go in there and ask some questions. Do not go to them at week 14 talking about, I need some help, I'm failing the class. Go to them now. Because what's going to happen is, one, there's going to be a line. And two, they're going to say, I, I don't know you. I mean, they're going to deny you like Peter denied Jesus. I'm serious. That was, that was comedy, but never mind. Some of you didn't read, this, read your Bibles. OK, all right, tight ends. Tight ends like counseling services. So you're having maybe some mental health issues, some problems. Maybe you broke up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, and you just distraught, and you want somebody to talk to because you think you're the only person in the world that's going to went through that. Or you're struggling to balance your home and work life. That's the place to go because they're great listeners because that's all they do. That's what they get paid to do, and to also give you advice and to be a referral agent. Last but not least, before I get to defense, you have your coaches, your mentors, people who are here to help you succeed. How many mentors do we have in Orleans? Can you all stand? I want to give you a shout out. If you, if you consider yourself a mentor, which basically if you work here, you are a mentor, let's give them a round of applause. Now, 
Now make sure, now make, uh huh, keep standing, keep standing, because I want to make sure they, they take a look at you like it's a lineup. Because when they have problems, they coming to you. They coming to you, they coming to you. They coming to your house. Well, office, office, okay. So that's what mentors do, like coaches. And everyone knows in football, if you're having problems, you got to sometimes call a timeout to, to talk to your coach and make sure you get it right. And then, of course, we got the referees. Everybody loves them right now in the NFL. We love the referees just messing up calls. But on a, on a campus, they are the, the administrators. Now, this is why I will say they are here to protect the integrity of the campus. They are also here to ensure the safety of the campus. They make calls all the time, but they don't always get them right. But they get, most, they get them right most of the time. That's like a bring, you, bring me back moment. Like, please, bring me back. So that's what they do. So that's your offense and your coaches and your referees. Now we got the defense. Take center stage, ladies. No dudes want to be on defense, huh? No, no guys on defense. That's cool. I ain't mad. Uh, you, ain't got, you ain't got to look like that. All right, come around. All right. What is defense, y'all? Defense is pretty much what tries to determine you from reaching your goal every day. It is the poor decisions. It is the fear. It is the low confidence. It is the unawareness. It's the lack of skills. It's the academic deficiencies. It's the bad influences. It's the procrastination. How many of you deal with procrastination? Yeah. Don't cheer for that one. That's not a cheer. <laughs> but this is what you're dealing with every day. But you need a good team to help you.